hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ila, and I am from the Consumer and Investor Office at the Securities Commission Malaysia. Welcome to our Digital Literacy for Seniors program. Today's webinar is on Grow Your Wealth Through Digital Investment Manager. On behalf of the SC, I wish to record our appreciation to higher seniors for their assistance in promoting this program. Now, we are pleased to have with us today Mr. Julian Ng from Akru Now in City Bahut to present on the topic, Grow Your Wealth Through Digital Investment Manager. Allow me to share a brief background on Julian. Julian has about 20 years experience in the investment banking industry, working regionally in Malaysia, Singapore, and Hong Kong. He also produced and hosted primetime business and finance shows on BFM 89.9, the business radio station. He co-founded and is the chief advisor of Acru. Acru is a license by the Securities Commission Malaysia for digital investment management. Now, please stay tuned till the end of the session as we will be having a short Q&A session followed by the pop quiz session for all participants. Further to this, we would like to invite all participants to take our survey. Next, please. Please do follow us on our social media platform for useful information on investing and latest updates on our initiatives. Now, I will pass over to Julian to share his presentation on Grow Your Wealth Through Digital Investment Management. Julian. Thank you, Ila, and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time out to uh, basically hear me talk about our business and uh, what we can offer you. Of course, uh, we are very passionate about this. Um, a little bit of background about the crew. We, uh, as Ila has said, uh, we have been licensed by the Securities Commission for DIM, which is uh, Digital Investment Management. Um, and uh, this license really uh, asks for the holders, the license holders to provide some kind of digital in innovation in investment uh, management. So what we do is that uh, we, we put a lot of analytics uh, behind our recommendations. Uh, and so what uh, the end product that we have for you would be what we feel uh, to be the best recommendation uh, using financial planning principles. Uh, this is of course to be differentiated from many of the online courses that you see on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, it, you know, asking you to part with a lot of your money to trade on forex and exchange and so on. Um, I, I I think those some a lot of those courses have not gone through the rigorous process, uh, the rigorous investment process that is required by the Securities Commission uh, to to do their license activity. And and it's not just for digital investment management; it's for a lot of the other uh, licensing as well. Uh, the SE requires a lot of this hard work before you can get your license. So I, I hope that uh, you will enjoy this presentation and then please always be aware of uh, the kind of scams that are out there that are from people who are not uh, approved by the Securities Commission. All right, uh, let's start with this. Unfortunately, uh, we're starting with some bad news. Uh, we, we will see that uh, there is a requirement problem. I want to say re retirement crisis, but I, I think over the long term, uh, Malaysia would find that a lot of people are not saving enough for their retirement. Uh, for example, 70% of EPF uh, contributors uh, age 55, when they retire and take out all their money, they, they use it within uh, 10 years uh, of taking out their money of that withdrawal. And actually EPF has a uh, recommendation to have about 228,000. Uh, when you retire at 55, that's just a recommendation. It's not something that you by hook or by crook will aim for. For example, this, this 228,000 actually will just give you minimum wage, they're about spending per month. Yeah. So uh, the, e even this number, which is the recommended number by EPF, actually is not enough. Um, and when you also look at the other EPF survey, which is Belanja One Ku. Uh, they have all these uh, budget for different for, for people from different uh, walks of life and different situations in life, and specifically for elderly couples, 
uh, that is about 3,000 ringgit a month, all right? Uh, and then the, this, this is an actual survey that uh, EPF has done. Uh, it doesn't mean that this will fit into your uh, spending, your, your pattern of spending. You may be spending less or more than this. It depends on your lifestyle, but this is according to the survey uh, that EPF has done out there. I think uh, a, a takeaway from here is that um, you can live on 3,000 a month, all right? Uh, that, that's what this survey is suggesting. Uh, more bad news. Uh, given, given that, right, uh, you, you have 50% of contributors uh, who are above age 54. So half of the people above age 54 in EPF have got savings of 50,000 or below. And certainly they, they you know, they, they can't spend, they, they don't have enough money to uh, allow them to spend 3,000 ringgit for the rest of their retiring uh, life, for their re retirement life. So uh, but I've been telling you the good news, uh, but uh, the bad news, but uh, there is a good news. Uh, DIM holders like Accru uh, is here to help you. And uh, this is a page from our Instagram. Actually, um, the advertisers, our, our digital advertising agency, uh, it, you know, they, they wanted to use the uh, older people with walking steak, you know, uh, that, that's, that's a stereotype of the old people, right? The old, older people or the retirees of today have got a different, um, uh, it, they, they don't fit into the stereotype anymore, right? Uh, the retirees today are happy, they're healthy, they're strong, and they got many years more to their productive edge, uh, to, to the productive age and edge. Um, and, and so a crew also wants to do away with that kind of stereotype we want to come here and tell you that uh, you have a chance uh, to break that stereotype and uh, you need some money to uh, ensure that. Now, there are a lot of things that are stopping the elderly citizens uh, from actually having access to good financial products that are out there, all right? And this is a survey that has been done by the OECD. Uh, the top three uh, you can see are already having to do with uh, digital literacy, financial literacy. Uh, some, some of it is uh, cognitive decline, which is not related to anything that's digital, but uh, it's just related to old age. And then uh, they, they've got um, 10 factors, uh, but you know, you look down the list, again, uh, there, th these are some lists that are pretty common to access to financial products like uh, di difficulty in assessing financial advice and lack of uh, financial products that are out there in the marketplace that are tailored for the seniors. So this is very much a changing world and digital literacy is a very important part of this. Uh, the good news is that digital platforms are getting more and more intuitive so that uh, the senior citizens would find it more and more uh, uh, easier to use it. Uh, an example that I like to give is actually Grab, all right? When you go into Grab, it's actually a no-brainer. You go in there, um, now nowadays, you find it very easy to use, right? You want to order food, you want to go get from point A to point B. It's very easy to use and uh, happy to say that a lot of financial products these days, they cater to that kind of ease of use. Uh, but and, and also, you know, the fact that you all you guys have signed up today and using Zoom, that shows that you are already uh, a few notches above normal people. You already have uh, some degree of digital literacy. Now, um, this is a question that is uh, very often asked of uh, financial advisors, right? Oh, I'm already 55, I'm already 60. Do I have time to invest? And the very quick answer to that is yes because uh, the amount of years that you spend in retirement is a long time, right? Uh, when, you, when you buy unit trust products, for example, and you read the prospectus uh, for, let's say, a high-risk unit trust product, they would say that, oh, you need at least three to five years uh, to invest so that uh, you see the results of this. But with retirement, you have decades, you know, so you have a lot of time to actually to invest, to put your money to good use so that you get returns uh, and the biggest mistake that you can get is to put all your money in fixed deposit because that might not be able to take care of your lifestyle inflation, right? That, that's the biggest mistake to put 100% of all your money in the fixed deposit. 
Uh, this is another um, update that we had on our Instagram. You, if you have the time, uh, maybe you can go out there uh, later today and you follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, but if, if you look at this, uh, the, the picture on the, on the right, on, on the left, sorry. Um, sorry, I, I was, I'm supposed to say next slide uh, to the SC people. <laughs> uh, glad that they could catch up with me. Yeah, uh, so if you look at the picture on the uh, left, uh, this is what you see in the very short term, right? If you monitor your stock prices from day to day or your unit trust prices or your investment prices from day to day, today you monitor it, tomorrow you look again, and then the next day you look again, uh, you, you will see that, that that's not a very good idea for long-term investments because uh, when the market falls or crashes like it did uh, last year during the start of the COVID situation. I know a lot of people actually just sold out of their investments, even long-term investments, uh, they, they sold out of it. But actually you're just looking at a very uh, small time window of uh, your decades long investment. So what, what happens is that on the frame on the right, uh, you, you'll see that over the long term, if you allow your investments to be exposed to risk, uh, you would also benefit uh, from the long-term returns that come out of uh, long-term market investments. Next slide. Uh, uh, the other question or the other practice that a lot of people have uh, is that they only uh, feel that they can spend only their interest. Actually, that's not true, okay? You, you can actually spend part of your capital and if you do, if you do that, uh, you, you actually give yourself a lot more income and a lot more, uh, a, a lot less stress, right? Uh, because we can't take our money to the graves, all right? So with this kind of background, if you can't take your money to the grave, then you have to really consider what you want to do uh, by leaving so much money behind uh, to, to not spend that money and to leave that behind. Uh, there are many good reasons for that. For example, uh, you, you would perhaps want to give that to your children or your grandchildren for a head start so that uh, you know, they, they have a head start in life. But you know, you've got to consider the fact that your children and your grandchildren are able-bodied people, right? They, they have working life ahead of them uh, and uh, they, they can actually supplement their own retirement, right? So if you are short of funds, and um, you, you're struggling to provide for yourself, then you got to consider spending your own uh, capital, all right? And if your children are all grown up, and some of us may have grandchildren that are also grown up, um, then technically speaking, you have no more dependents. Uh, really, you don't have to uh, provide an income for them. You don't have to provide for them. Uh, there is no pressure to leave anything in the will. So this is not a must, all right? It's just to know that you have an option to spend your capital. Now, uh, what is the, um, how, how should you spend your capital? All right, there is this very famous rule called the 4% rule. And uh, it, it's just a very simple rule. It, it just says that uh, you can spend 4% of your assets yearly. You know, obviously, you should invest your, your assets. And when you invest your assets, your assets, your assets will also grow. For example, if you invested your assets and you got 5% returns, all right? Let's say all right, you, you don't want the, the FD returns, yeah? Uh, so move away from those type of uh, FD returns for your entire assets and uh, try to get, let's say, 5% returns. Now, if you've got 4% returns and you spend only, sorry, if you've got 5% returns and you only spend 4% of your uh, assets, your money will never finish, right? So, so that's one idea. But, but actually, uh, even the creator of this 4% rule, he has said that this uh, rule is now outdated because uh, inflation rates have been very low over the last decade and uh, market returns have also been higher. For example, if you, if you could achieve, let's say, 6 to 7% market returns, uh, then you can spend you know, between 4 and 6% of your, your assets. Um, and uh, suffice to say that this 4% is very conservative. If, if you're just spending 4% of your assets and you're getting kind of like 5% returns, then uh, this, is, this is something that should be enough to last your entire retirement life. Next slide. 
Now, how much do you need to retire? Uh, this is just a table showing uh, how much you need. Uh, and uh, it's based on certain assumptions. Uh, we, we are assuming like a 5% expected returns per annum, and you're allowed to give yourself a 2% raise every year. Uh, this is just to handle inflation. Now, I know that some of you would say that this 2% uh, inflation rate or 2% raise may not be enough because inflation is so high. Now, if you look at Malaysia, Malaysia's headline inflation over the last 30 years, uh, the average inflation rate would be about 3%. Um, and uh, over the last 10 years, it has been much lower, right? Much lower than 3%, even below 2%. And consider the fact that you are already retired, you might not need to spend so much, right? You, you might not be using your car too much, or you, you might not be spending too much on clothing uh, for, you know, to, to be presentable, let's say, to go out to work. Uh, so you would have less of that. But I do understand that that is tempered uh, slightly by the fact that other expenses could be higher, like medical expenses. So um, if you look at it, right, uh, half a million to 750,000, uh, it's actually quite comfortable uh, to, for you to get between 3,000 uh, to 4,000 ringgit inflation adjusted spending per month. Um, and uh, that also ties in with the EPF survey earlier on uh, that requires about 3,000 ringgit per month. If you want to spend 3,000 ringgit a month for the, for the elderly couple, then perhaps you would need between five to 750,000 a year. All right? If you have more, then uh, obviously that would be more comfortable. But if you have less, then uh, if, you, if you look at the 300,000 range, um, then uh, you, you are starting to move towards the a minimum wage uh, kind of level uh, in terms of the spending, perhaps you've got to do something about it. Now, what can you do, right? Next slide, supplementing your, your income. Um, we, we all know that uh, most Malaysian flat families, uh, the, the children would, would give something back to the parents and, and that's one way of supplementing the income. Uh, the other very good way is to reduce your lifestyle inflation. So for example, we said that the assumption earlier is to give yourself a 2% raise. So, well, if you don't give yourself a 2% raise um, and, and you say to yourself, okay, 3,000 ringgit a month, I think I can spend that for the next three years or the next four years, that goes a very, very long way into extending your half a million or your 750,000 ringgit or even your 1 million ringgit, right? It goes a very long way in sustaining that. In addition to uh, that, we, we know that the retirees today are, uh, will, will bring all sorts of stereotypes, right? They, they are more capable, they're healthier, and uh, they're go-getters. They can still go out there and do part-time jobs uh, um, and uh, get gigs and be part of the freelance community. In fact, uh, you know, uh, Hire Seniors, right, which is a, a co-sponsor of this event today, you, you can log on to the website, hireseniors.my, and uh, they got a lot of ideas there uh, for seniors like yourselves. Um, I, I'm also going to touch on selling assets. Uh, for example, if you have a property or if you have cars, uh, you can sell that. Uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but also the other way, obviously, uh, is to increase your investment returns by taking the right degree of risk, right? Uh, if, if, you're like, if you have too much money in FD right now, uh, then perhaps it's time to think about how you can increase your returns by uh, taking more risk and uh, by having a diversified portfolio, have a more diversified portfolio. So these are some of the ways uh, that would allow you to uh, have some hope, right? If you, if you feel that you, if you don't have enough to retire, uh, you can think about some of these factors to uh, actually raise your income. Now, next slide. Um, now, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, spending, uh, sorry, uh, selling your property, all right? Let's say your property right now is worth about half a million or some, uh, some, some people, they have uh, paid installments on their property for 30 years and their property might be worth 1 million today. You know, you, you have a lot of money if you just have this property, let's say 1, 1 million ringgit or half a million ringgit, and then in your bank account, you just have 100,000 ringgit, right? it's a lot of money being stuck in that asset, right? So you are in a position to consider, to really consider whether you want to sell that particular prop uh, property 
and raise half a million funding, one million funding to add on top of that hundred thousand only right now that you have in your FD, but you feel you have no hope. You you, you know you only have hundred thousand in a bank account. Please consider this. All right, uh, and then. After you sell, you, after you sell your half a million or one million property, you rent a place. You rent a place for one thousand ringgit. Uh, you are a rich person, right? You you have a lot to last uh, for the rest of your 20, 30 years, and and then you invest, right? Remember, we were saying that if you can invest this um, five half a million, one million ringgit, you will be able to get some income back. Uh, and then that unspent amount uh, can continue to grow because they are being exposed uh, to the growth of the market. All right. Same thing with cars, right? Nowadays it's so easy to travel by Grab. So why why keep that cars that that car uh, where you might have to spend on insurance, on road tax, on petrol, on maintenance, right? The maintenance can get very expensive. So. Think about uh, liquidating some of your property to add uh, to your retirement pool. Now, the other very important thing to next slide uh, to consider is insurance. Uh, whether you need it, uh, a lot of the uh, cutoff points for insurance will be age 65, 70. So before you hit that age, just think about whether you need to get insurance. Uh, and also before you develop health issues, right? As we get older, uh, we, we would have more health issues surfacing. So the healthier you are, the better it is a time to get your insurance policy. Uh, but if you don't have any more dependence, uh, you may not, uh, you know, a lot of people, they insure for so that their kids have something. But if your kids are grown up, they have their own jobs. Do you need a life insurance? Maybe, you know, maybe you need a life insurance for your spouse. If you go, then at least your spouse would have some income or you might need it for yourself. Uh, if, for instance, you, uh, let's say, get a stroke, paralyzed, or if you need some uh, limb amputated, <laughs> sorry to be so, I hope no one is pantang out there, uh, then, then the, the life insurance actually kicks in. This is called uh, total and permanent disability, right? This is TPD. Uh, some, some of it uh, uh, may come in useful. And obviously you need health insurance uh, for asset protection as well. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's very important because if, if you have a big health issue, instead of drawing it from your assets to pay for the med medical bills, uh, this health insurance will kick it. And, and today, uh, I, I think the health insurance uh, and even the life insurance, uh, there are a lot of online models. So as part of your digital literacy, you should explore some of this, right? Uh, a lot of this online insurance uh, providers can offer a lot of policies very cheaply, very plain vanilla, and very easy to understand. Uh, you should explore some of these policies, right? Um, now, insurance for older people, uh, for senior people, obviously is very expensive because of our age. Uh, then the, the other thing is that you've got to consider whether uh, instead of spending tons of money on, let's say, insurance that you don't need, for example, if you don't have dependents, um, you might not leave, need life insurance, then, you, you, you want to see whether your assets are enough for you to self-insure yourself, right? Um, and, and that's where the liquidated property might come in, right? Yeah. Okay, next slide. Uh, very quickly, just to show that uh, medi medical inflation in Malaysia and around the world has been crazy. Uh, very, very crazy. Uh, just imagine the average inflation is 3% uh, or lower. The medical inflation is very, very high. So take note of this. All right, uh, so uh, make risk your friend. Uh, let, let a platform like the crew help you. Uh, now let, let's just walk through very quickly uh, the accrue platform. Uh, I just I just want to show you uh, how to use the accrue platform. Um, and uh, please do go in to explore more on your own. Uh, we do have have a help uh, WhatsApp. You can WhatsApp anytime if you have any questions. Now, uh, let's go with the risk assessment, right? Slide uh, 18. Um, we basically um, assess people on the risk requirement, all right? And there are three main categories, which is the moderate, moderate Mary, uh, then the low risk, low risk Larry. Usually low risk Larry uh, are for people who just want to spend their money within the next year or next two years or something like that. And then we have the high risk Harry. 
Now, if you have uh, 20, 30 years to invest, perhaps you are a moderate Mary, all right? Uh, maybe you can invest in some of those balanced portfolios. Next slide. Um, we will ask you some questions about yourself so that we will know how to score you and recommend one of our 10 portfolios to you. So these are some of the questions you might have to, you would have to answer before you go on, all right? And even under the goals, uh, you would have another few questions to answer so that we get to know you more and uh, we'll be able to uh, recommend the right portfolios for you. Uh, this is how the goal page would look like. Uh, so uh, you can save for your retirement. We have also savings for education, property, and we have also general savings. Now, if you want to spend your money already uh, right now, you can invest with, with us, go into general savings, all right? Actually, the retirement savings is for um, people who want to save for re re retirement. Let's say they're 30, 20 years old or 30. That's uh, what the retirement savings uh, are for. And sorry that uh, it's an old, old person with a walking stick. We will change that icon. Uh, but I, I think for retirees who would like to draw income from their assets, uh, they would go for general savings. We will be adding more goals in the future. We will uh, definitely, certainly be adding an income goal. So it would be easy for you uh, to just save. And then every month we will just send you a withdrawal amount uh, bank it into your bank account uh, so that you can spend from there. All right, just like an ATM, withdraw from your ATM. All right, uh, what are you investing into? Uh, very quickly, uh, you know, it's a very diversified portfolio. This is slide 22. Um, we are investing in some of the highest growth companies and also thousands of other uh, companies. So you're really investing into a very diversified portfolio, all right? All, all the high growth companies plus bonds, all right? Bonds, uh, global bonds uh, would be part of your portfolio as a retiree as well. And so this becomes something that is um, uh, relevant to you because it becomes a very diversified balanced portfolio. You have both high risk equity and uh, lower risk bonds. Now, uh, can I just jump straight to our fees, uh, which is slide 24. Now, uh, our fees are very simple uh, and in fact, very, very much cheaper than a lot of schemes that are out there, extremely cheap. Uh, basically, we charge, you, we charge 10 ringgit uh, on sign up and we also charge 0.7% a, a year on some invested, but it's a declining scale. So the more you invest, the more, uh, the cheaper it becomes. Next slide, how can we uh, charge such a low price? Uh, this is because we, we have, we, we go for volumes. In fact, we even absorb all the trading fees, yeah, the brokerage uh, and the custodian fees and things like that. Uh, you don't have to bear any of those costs. Um, the the 0.7% uh, would cover for that. Now, uh, just very quickly on slide 26, uh, this is how you, you sign up. Uh, the, the first step, uh, just, just two very simple steps. Uh, the first step, uh, enter your email. And the second step, I uh, would encourage you to press the blue button. All right, uh, and uh, this slide, slide 27, that's right. Um, and you just press the blue button, sign up with Google, and you're good to go, all right? Uh, the next step, uh, you, you will see a dashboard, uh, and then uh, you would you would be able to sign up uh, pretty quickly. All right, uh, the last slide, which is slide 29. Uh, yes. So uh, if you sign up, we, we have a promo right now. If you sign up uh, before the 15th of July, uh, deposit 100 ringgit or uh, any sum higher, uh, we, would, we would add 20 ringgit for your uh, account. Um, and uh, all you have to do is to input is accrue, IS, yeah, accrue 20, IS for invest smart, accrue 20, IS accrue 20 in your bank ID when you transfer your ID. Now, when you transfer in your bank ID, you go to your, your, your bank account, you put in the accrues uh, bank account number under the recipient reference, two things you got to enter. One is uh, your IC number. Always when you transfer money to us, just include your IC number in the recipient reference. And then the second recipient reference include this promo code 
of IS Crew 20. And uh, we, 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 if, if you're investing 100, for example, uh, just transfer 80 bucks to us, just minus that 20, right? And just transfer 80 bucks to us and uh, we'll do the, the rest. So we, we hope to see you uh, online uh, with your account open and, and we hope that you would have a fruitful uh, retirement life. So I'm, I'm happy to take any questions now. Thank you very much. Okay, so I can see on the Slido there are, there are quite a few questions there. Okay, uh, let me just get on to Slido. Okay, sure, no problem. Right, uh, I guess we, did anybody vote for any questions? Okay, uh, the WhatsApp, let, let me answer the first one. Uh, what's the WhatsApp accrue, uh, WhatsApp number for a crew? Um, you don't even have to remember that number all right uh, you just you just go onto our website click on the whatsapp icon and you'll be able to start talking to us all right does that does that answer the question all right um let, let me take uh, the other questions uh, what is your take on the recently announced reverse mortgage by chagamas reverse mortgage by chagamas Okay, um, I have not really looked into this, to be honest, but um, it sounds promising. Uh, I, I, I certainly want to explore this more, and I hope that you keep uh, watching this space. Uh, we might make some comments on this, but certainly the, the concept of reverse mortgage is, is, is not a bad one because what it means is that it will just give you one lump sum capital and then uh, you gotta you, you gotta pay interest on it or something like that, right? Because uh, you still own your assets, but uh, perhaps Chagamas may give you one lump sum of capital, and then you pay interest on that. Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, it's just like paying rent on your property, and and the interest rate might be cheaper than the the rental yield, or or, or maybe I don't know, right? The interest rate today is kind of like four percent, five percent. Uh, if Chagamas is able, or if, if Chagamas um, uh, is able, Chagamas investors, right? Maybe, maybe they, they sell these kind of loans to investors. If the investors are okay with the lower interest rates, then it will give a good run for the money for uh, selling property. But I understand that selling your property, the property has got a lot of sentimental value. So you, people usually don't want to sell the property that they have been living in for uh, most of their lives, right? They don't want to sell that. So this might be a good idea, but uh, I would uh, stop short of actually giving advice on this because I don't have the details of all this, uh, uh, this scheme by Chagamas yet. Now, uh, is, is a crew Sharia compliant, but not yet? Uh, we will be. Very soon we will be. So uh, watch this space again. Is there a fee uh, for charging port for, for changing? No, there isn't a fee for changing a portfolio. We charge uh, a fee for the entire invested amount and uh, we, we total it out basically. So let, let's say you invest more, right? Uh, you, you go into the next tier and then we, we will reduce the fee. I think the lowest fee would be 0.2 or 0.3%. What is the withdrawal process? Uh, actually, it's very easy. You, uh, you would have signed up with your uh, bank account, right? When we KYC you, we will require your bank uh, and you would have given us your bank number. And when you want to withdraw, uh, that function is available on the website and all you have to do is to enter your withdrawal uh, and, and just press the button, we will then send the money to your bank account. So it is a very easy and secure process. Yeah. So we, we don't uh, send the money to somebody else's account. Uh, we, we just send it to your registered account. And if you wanted to change your account number, uh, we have a two-factor authentication process, all right? We will ask your permission by sending you a PIN uh, on your phone and uh, before we change the bank account number, right? So the withdrawal process is actually quite easy. Now, how uh, different is the platform compared to other competitors? I think uh, elsewhere, 
Uh, people have also asked this question about whether a crew is same as stash away and whether a crew is same as rise and uh, wahid invest now all these companies that have been um, uh, mentioned are all dim licensees all right they have already uh, dim licensees and uh, they, they, we, we are different in different ways, all right? Uh, but the moment you get your uh, account open with any one of these robo advisors, uh, you, you know what you will get? You immediately get your peace of mind, all right? Because the, the longer you, you put off, um, you put off your, your investing, uh, the, the more problematic is, it becomes, you know, because you, you want to really get your money invested so that you get the return. So, uh, I, I would say that uh, we are similar. We are, most of us are similar, but we are also quite different in terms of how we uh, allocate our portfolio. Uh, a crew has uh, uh, uses this uh, philosophy of, of simplicity, all right? We, we just have a global portfolio. Some of the other robot advisors may actually allocate it uh, quite differently. So I don't want to speak on behalf of the other robot advisors, but uh, for us, uh, we usually, uh, I say usually because some of our um, uh, more conservative portfolios have got Malaysian bond uh, and fixed income investments, but usually our portfolio is focused on the global allocation. All right, it's a, it's a simple global allocation. Is our investment capital guaranteed? No, 100% no. <laughs> Only FD is guaranteed. Uh, maybe some people are saying that uh, the EPF uh, is guaranteed. I, I would argue EPF is not actually guaranteed. Okay, EPF is almost guaranteed, but not 100% guaranteed. Now, the guarantee portion of EPF is that uh, it's 2%. Okay, by law, by law, EPF is supposed to give you 2 or 2.5%. The government will step in if they fall below 2% 2, 2 or something like that. Uh, I don't think the government has ever had to step in to... Uh, to make good on this guarantee, uh, EPF usually gives between four and between four to five percent uh, uh, returns. Uh, but with accrue and other platforms, it's definitely not guaranteed. And the reason is that you are taking risks, right? There, there is no free lunch. If you want higher returns, you got to take more risk. If you want lower returns, then you take less risk. If you want something that's guaranteed then the returns will be very, very low. So you, you've got to match the, the risk and the returns uh, to what you're trying to achieve. And of course, with um, apart from retirement, uh, a crew also manages for other goals. For example, um, education, right? If you're saving for your children's education, then you've got to take slightly higher risk because you've got a longer time to invest in. Uh, but if you want to spend your money, let's say in the next three years, some people say for three years just to buy the property, then you, you cannot have such a high risk investment. Right? Is there a maximum limit to invest in a crew? No, there isn't. Uh, you, you, you can invest 10 ringgit, 100 ringgit, 1000 ringgit, even 1 million ringgit. Uh, you, you, you can, all right, you can invest with a crew. What are we investing in? Uh, Accrue basically invests in these things called ETFs, all right, exchange traded fund. Um, exchange traded fund uh, basically is like a unit trust, but more simple, more simple. Basically, they are very, very much cheaper and uh, very, very low cost, all right. Uh, think of it as an AirAsia, all right. In AirAsia, the, the planes are structured in a low cost way, all right, the, the seats very, uh, very tight, uh, and, and then it's all standardized kind of thing, right? No business class, nothing. Uh, same thing with e ETFs. Uh, the, the ETFs are very, very low cost. If you want uh, a US fund, uh, they will just fix, almost, almost fix the US uh, companies that they invest in. Once in a while, they, they just put some new companies in and take out some old companies, but very rarely. So that amount is fixed. They don't like buy and sell every day. And that really reduces the cost. And over the long term, it actually reflects the returns of the market. So let's say the US market has returned 10% per annum for the last 10 years, you know, let's say 10 to 12% uh, for the last 10 years, the ETF would replicate that returns. All right, it will give you about the same returns, almost the same returns. So it's kind of like a, 
way to say that, hey, this is a more reliable investment, reliable in the sense that I'm just following the US market. I'm just accepting the returns of the US market. And I, I don't have to second guess uh, what, let's say, a crew. What, what, what is a crew buying and what is a crew selling? What to do? Uh, uh, that, that can be a very scary moment, you know, if let's say a crew buys into, make a big bet into something, right? Or, or fails to make a bet into, uh, uh, let, let's say, um, Amazon or Microsoft, and then the price shoot up, right? So th this one will just take the guesswork out of it. Uh, a crew invests in ETFs so that uh, there is some kind of reliability that we follow what the market returns. If the market returns 5%, then we will return 5%. If the market returns 10%, then we will return 10%. And, and this is a very good question. So it, it also allows us to do our ana analysis, right? We can say over the long term, uh, let's say if we follow uh, the average returns of global markets, what is their return? Okay, then uh, long-term returns average, uh, let's say 7%, right, in USD terms. Then we can say to you, hey, long-term returns are 7%. And therefore, if you invest, let's say, 500000 with a crew, you can, we, you can withdraw uh, 3000 ringgit a month or 4000 ringgit a month would be safe for you to withdraw uh, because we have looked at all these statistics, right? So we, we recommend uh, uh, you, you know, you know, that margin of safety uh, for you to withdraw your money to spend uh, so that, that that money would last throughout your retirement, all right? It, it, it's a more prudent way of investing your money. So actually investing in just accepting the market returns gives us a way to rely on the market uh, to, to do our work and to make our recommendations to you. That's what we get our license from the Securities Commission to do, yeah, uh, to, so that we, we can actually offer you all this uh, value added. Uh, Ila, do we, do we have more time or is the time, time up, time's up uh, for? No, no, oh, we, we, we still have time. We want to answer some questions. I just wanted to um, actually also, uh, actually there are also some questions people are asking on the, on the Zoom chat as well. Okay. So, and you Maybe, um, can you give me some yeah, interesting yeah. ones? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, uh, let's see. The, uh, okay, first one is by Francis Leong. What kind of returns can I expect? Yeah, so uh, the it, it depends on which portfolio, all right? Uh, and, and it depends on your goals, right? Uh, this, this is one of the difference of a crew with traditional investing um, methods uh, in the sense that the goal determines your risk-taking and your risk-taking determines the returns, all right? And the same person can actually have many goals, right? If you want to split your money, let's say uh, uh, you, you got half a million bucks or, or 200,000 bucks, you, you want to take out 30,000 to save for travel in five years time. You can do that, you know, and you just, uh, set up a goal called travel, and then you, you invest that differently. Uh, and uh, then for the rest of your retirement, if you got 10, 10 15 years to invest for your retirement, then we, we will see uh, a return, uh, uh, an appropriate return to recommend to you. So I, I would say that uh, the portfolio returns would range from uh, maybe uh, 3%, to all the way up to eight to 10%, all right? Uh, th those, those are the returns of the portfolio. But for your purposes, if you're actually uh, investing to save to, to have a retirement income, I would say that it, it's safe to assume a kind of 5% returns over the long term, yeah, over the long term. Okay, um, I think this is one of the vital questions. What is Accru's website? <laughs> all right, it's accrunow.com. <laughs> A K R U N O W dot com. Okay. Um, and um, this is one question that's actually did. Okay. Uh, does Accru stand for anything? Yeah. So uh, the, the English word of Accru is A C C R U E. Uh, Accru means uh, small amounts, right? So when you accrue something, you're, you're just putting aside small amounts. 
And obviously, what, what do you want that small amount for, right? For it to become big. Mm -hmm. So that, that's uh, the, the meaning behind our name accrue. But uh, we just, uh, for style, style purposes, <laughs> uh, put in the K instead of a C. Um, okay, I think maybe we can take uh, one, one more question. Is that all right? Sure. Okay, um, the last question is, uh, is the investment amount tax allowable like PRS? Ah, no. Uh, so right now, you, you see, you, you, as a retiree, the question is, are you taxed? All right, that, that's the first mm -hmm. question. The second question, as a retiree, would you invest in PRS? So my answer to that is kind of no, right? Uh, you, you, you would be using your assets right now. And therefore, if you have income, then obviously you've got to declare that, but uh, you might not be taxed, right? Uh, if, if you earn like more than maybe a certain amount a month as a retiree, like if you do the freelance or anything like that, then you, you got to look at your tax bracket. In that case, then the PRS might be relevant for offsetting taxes, uh, but no, accrue is not taxed. Accrue is not taxed. Um, but we, we, we would say that uh, over the long term, uh, over global investments, uh, you got to balance these two out, yeah? Uh, a tax relief, you, you got to make sure that you have enough income to offset tax, that's number one. If you don't, uh, no point uh, trying to have that tax relief. And then number two is that over the long term, uh, whether the, the returns would, uh, would more than offset uh, any tax releases. Yeah. Hope that, answers, hope that answers the question. All right. Thank you so much, Julian, for the very informative presentation. Um, okay, so- Thanks for um, inviting me. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you, Julian, for speaking at our webinar. Um, if any of you have any further questions to ask our crew, like Julian said, you can pop over to their website and ask there. Uh, don't forget to watch our webinar again, on, which will be uploaded on our YouTube channel in due course. Uh, do check out our previous webinar sessions on our YouTube channel as well. But before we end this session, I would just like to send a quick reminder to all only deal with licensed or registered entities and or individuals. Beware of investments promoted via social media platform. If it's too good to be true, it's probably too, it's probably is too good to be true. Uh, never deposit your money into a personal bank account. If you're unsure, do not hesitate to contact the SC. With that, stay safe, stay at home. And if you need to go out, always maintain physical distancing. Hope to see everyone again at our next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julian.